Hey, you! Someone shouted from behind me. My first instinct was to turn around and see who was calling me, but my mind went right back to the last time I did that. In a flash, I summoned Aegis and whipped it around to protect myself. Then I summoned Mori and prepared for a fight just in case. Once I was facing the person who called me, I saw what looked to be three nobles and their beast familiars. That's him, your lordship. That's the familiar who killed Omwell, one of them said to the most decorated of the three. He was the largest of them all and had several grey feathers indicating his was quite old. The old one had many gold laces around his body, as well as large jewels that the other two didn't have. Are you sure? The old gnome asked in a gruff voice. Yes, Magistrate Gakil. The younger gnome talking turned to me. I will never forget that disgusting ape. The older gnome, Magistrate Gakil, turned to me and began speaking. Investigator Mankin may have ruled in your favour, but it is inconceivable that a familiar could kill a high-ranking noble's son and be allowed to live. I will rectify the situation. As soon as he said that, his lizard-like familiar reared up on his hind legs and opened its now glowing red mouth. It then dropped his body and shot a ball of fire at me. I pushed my shield out and moved behind it as much as possible, but the force of the blast still knocked me off balance for a moment. I need some breathing room, I said quietly to myself and sent Mori away the new shadow chanting to summon destiny. I threw it as hard as I could and fly straight into the open mouth of the familiar as it was charging up another shot. It went down his throat and killed it, causing it to fall forward with a thud. Destiny, I called out, and she reappeared back in my hand. The two lesser nobles stepped back in fear, but not the older one. Impressive, but that was just a salamander. Let's see how you handle my prize familiar. There goes. A magic circle formed in the ground between myself and the three nobles, and the large horse-sized monster began to appear. It had scales, leathery wings, a short fat neck, and a long tail with spikes at the end. Behold! One of the lesser dragon species! A drake! The magistrate said smugly. A freaking dragon? I screamed in my head. Suma! I shouted. I don't care where you are or what you are doing, but you need to summon me now. What? Why? She asked for our mental connection. I'm under attack by three nobles and his pet dragon. What? She yelled. Okay, one moment. Just as she said that, the drake opened his mouth and sprayed fire at me. My shield blocked most of it, but my legs and elbows got burned bad. Ah! I yelled in pain and thrust my destiny into its still open mouth. Instead of killing it, the drake backed up slightly, then bit into the spear, shattering the wooden shaft and breaking off the tip, which probably spit onto the floor. The metal tip laid on the ground, glowing red hot. I tried whacking the drake with a shaft, but it didn't seem to notice. Mori, I shouted, and it appeared into my hand, taking the place of Destiny's remains. I looked down. The metal tip had disappeared as well, leaving only smoldering grass where it had been lain. A new weapon won't save you, familiar. You die today, he said. I cast some kind of spell that enveloped all of us in greenish energy. Jake, get ready, Suma said. I smiled and laughed at the nobles. Not today. Bye. I waited for a moment, and another, but nothing happened. Jake, something's wrong. I'm trying to summon you, but nothing's happening. Suma sounded panicked. The nobles started laughing. Did you really think it was going to be that easy? We took precautions to prevent your escape. A pre-prepared ritual meant to keep a familiar from being summoned away. We simply needed to activate it after confirming that Ergos would be enough to kill you. The old magistrate boasted. Suma, is using some ritual to keep me here, I said. I'm already on my way back, she yelled. Just hold on. I saw Mori at the drake and caught it on the neck leaving the gash but not killing it, unfortunately. It let out a pain screech and swiped me with his claws, which left puncture holes in Aegis, but not large ones, and not be back. A familiar that relies totally on tools and physical strength to fight? I guess I shouldn't be surprised. You are the familiar of a low-class wrench, who barely passes as a fifth-level support mage. Despite his words, I don't think he expected Mori to be able to hurt his drake. His voice has lost his pride, I was now much colder and more calculating. Ergos, kill him! The drake growled and took another swipe at me, but I quickly stepped back, dodging his attack. It spun around and used his tail to knock me off my feet, causing me to hit the ground hard. I rolled out of the way, just as it sprayed the area of the ground I was on with his fire again, barely avoiding getting burned. The drake then attempted to crush me with his tail, while I was on the ground and rolling away, and it would have to if I hadn't thrust Mori up into his path, forcing it to reel back and stop his attack. I scrambled to my feet and backed up out of the range of his claws and tail, and try summoning Destiny so that I could try throwing it to the Drake from a distance. As soon as it appeared, the metal tip fell to the ground, at the exact spot the Drake had broken it earlier. Good to know, about to find out, I mumbled to myself and resummoned Mori. 
I tried thinking of a strategy, but the drake didn't give me the time. His attacks very quick and in succession. It took everything I had to just keep myself from getting cut in half or burned. It would be a massive understatement to say that I was grateful for Aegis. I'm almost there, Jake. Hold on, Sumi yelled. I thought about trying magic, but I needed a focus to do that, and this drake wasn't going to let me close my eyes and imagine a fireball. It reared up and came back down with a thud. I expected another spray of fire, but instead I was greeted with a huge blast that threw me back and knocked Aegis off my arm, breaking my arm in the process. Ah! I yelled, grabbed my arm that was now broken at the elbow. This is for my son, the magistrate said, and the drake towered over me, readying another blast of fire. I thought I was dead. I readied myself for the pain. But instead of dying, I heard Sumi yell, Fly, Crimson Bolt! A bolt of magic fire hit the drake square in the head, sending it toppling over. Sumi landed between me and the drake, and immediately cast a spell that started healing me. She wasn't able to do much, but she was able to mostly fix my elbow before the drake got up and prepared to attack again. I'm sorry, Jake. I shouldn't have left you alone. I'm fine. Let's just get through this, I said, and grabbed her to retreat from the drake. We were able to make it out of the green energy field, but the drake and the noble still pursued us. The drake was big, but it was too slow, so we were able to stay ahead of it, but the lesser nobles had familiars of their own, and they were not as slow. Some kind of hyena thing bit my leg and caused me to trip, but I sat with Mori and started running again. Sumo was dealing with the white cat-like familiar of the other lesser noble by saying too high for it to reach and shooting fire at it. However, she underestimated it, and the feline familiar jumped straight up 20 feet and caught Sumo on the wing with one of his paws. She fell down and hit the ground. I jumped in and stabbed the familiar before it could get to Sumo though. Sumo, are you okay? I yelled as I picked her up. She didn't respond. I started running again while holding Sumo, but was cut off by a wall of fire made by the magistrate. Nowhere to run, you low-class piece of trash, he sneered. I considered charging through the flames and almost did, but that might have hurt Sumo more than she could handle. I looked at the nobles, and I was filled with so much anger. They had burned me, broken my arm, and tried to kill me. All that is one thing, but Sumo was non-responsive. She might have been dead. And all that anger and pain did something. It started pouring out as magic. Before I knew it, I'd enveloped the area we were all standing in, where my own field of navy blue magical energy. I'm going to kill you! I bellowed, 